welcome to FemVid's Ultimo for November. I am Program Associate Research Alicia Evans. And I'm Program Associate Media Advocacy Sean Rawls. If you don't know what FemVid's Ultimo is, it's basically the video kind of version of what went on in Feminine Pacific over the past month. Yeah. So, leading the stories, yeah. this Ultimo is the national budget, which was in the first week of November. Yeah, right back at the 6th of November, myself and Sham, we were there. We had to dress up very, very formally because it was in the parliament <laughs> kind of complex. I sit there for like two hours. Two oh. hours. It was a two hour speech. And then, you know, because we're talking about women, we love to talk about women, it is our job. It was really depressing and kind of upsetting to note down that the mention of women wasn't until like an hour and a half into the speech. Yeah. It was, we were kind of just waiting, sitting there making notes, and then the, the Attorney General kind of mentioned the provision of a women's correct yes. facilities in the West in that talk, because currently they don't have one. So, women have to come to Suva, separated from their families. Um, additionally, there is going to be some money injected into small businesses, including cottage industries. So the women will be supported, apparently. With how much money? No, and something else, well, we know this for a fact, um, but the Ministry for Women were given $52.2 million in the 2016 budget. I don't really know how much of that is kind of set aside for the Department of Women. Yeah. We don't know that, um, but we do know that for the Fiji's kind of women's plan of action, they were allocated, again, same as last year, $1 million to cover the five areas of the women's plan of action. So the five um, areas of the Women's Plan of Action include the formal sector in employment and livelihood. Yep, and then equal women, equal participation in um, decision making. And of course you've got the elimination of violence against women and children. Access to basic services is your fourth one, and then you've got women in the law. We don't know if one million is going to be enough, and neither do women from our rural network, basically. No. Um, but for example, definitely check out some of the things that are already up that have happened in this month, including um, part of what we're going to talk about next, which is the 16 Days of Activism. Uh, 16 Days of Activism, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically 16 days in the calendar from the 25th of November to the 10th of December, um, where we fight against uh, violence against women, um, rights for persons with disabilities, um, AIDS awareness as well, and the 25th of November is actually the International Day um, to End Violence Against Women, and the 10th of December is World Human Rights Day, so that's yeah. why those two dates were earmarked for 16 days. So there's a lot of fun and interesting things in between that, of course, um, for the 16 days we commemorated it by having three divisional consultations, but before that we... Um, had a young women's community radio learning exchange. Well, neither of us were actually there in the room because you were in Korea. I was in Korea. You'll hear about that soon. And I was actually gone to the north um, for a prep kind of meeting mm -hmm. with us Lombasa staff members um, over in the north, kind of making sure that they had their programs kind of lined up for the 16 days, including announcer breaks on information on what the specific dates of the activism kind of campaign period were, as well as getting them to understand a bit more about communication, like using radio, community radio, community broadcasting as that platform for advocating on women's development and human security priorities. It was fun, I got to meet rural women from the north. Yeah, and yeah. go to the north the first time! And we of course will be back in the north in the middle of January, which will be good fun and exciting. And hot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We brought the rain. It is either, it is still a dry spell, apparently, quickly to the weather. <laughs> it is still apparently, officially, a dry spell. It is not a drought, even though it's been dry since about August, if not July. Yeah. Um, good fun. Yeah, even though, yeah, well, people are kind of complaining about the dry spell drought, whatever you want to call it, people mm. are suffering. Yeah. Uh, especially women, but you don't hear about that in the news. No. But no. you can definitely find who makes the news on um, Mixcloud, uh, Film Pacific's Mixcloud, because that's a great way to kind of get all the podcasts where we, we cover and review quite a lot of the uh, the uh, non-drought coverage. Yeah. yeah. Not a drought. Um, but in case you feel like clicking on some links, we have an eight-part uh, reflective narrative series 
um, using some of the reflections of um, our conveners, our correspondents, some of the girls in the north that um, Alicia got to see in action in the office, um, and a couple of our rural media network members as well. So some of that sharing, you can find that on Facebook. All right, Sean, what are we talking about next? We are talking about Korea. Yes. I went to Korea. Thank you, Kimchi Chow. Oh yes, it was, it was incredibly interesting because of course in the Asia Pacific fashion a lot of the getting to know the other Asia Pacific feminists um, did happen quite a lot over the meals and the meals were amazing and um, for example the organizers of the APWEPS meetings made sure that we were fed properly. Um, APWEPS is the Asia Pacific Women's Alliance on Peace and Security, and so I attended from Fiji along with um, Vina Singh, who is from the Fiji Women's Rights Movement, as well as Ethel Suri from the Pacific Conference of Churches. We got to meet a colleague actually from West Papua, which was quite interesting, mm. um, because it was also ahead of the National Day for West Papua, so that was really cool, and we got to find out a little bit about what it's like speaking to a sister from a part of the Pacific that often doesn't get recognized as yeah. the Pacific. It was an incredibly interesting learning experience and of course, as usual, there are stories about that on our Facebook page. Yes, um, so make sure you go to our Facebook page. Uh, the link I'll provide for you now is facebook.com forward slash Feminine Pacific. It's also a great place to go because towards the end, so in fact from the 30th of November, we actually started some of our Pacific Cross posting for uh, COP21, so the big environmental, what are we going to do about the fact that we have almost completely destroyed the planet already. Good plan. <laughs> Thanks, leaders. Yeah, and of course you can follow some of our updates through then, um, but yeah, give our Facebook page a like and find anything, and you know, if you have any comments or questions, the Facebook page is a great place. Um, here actually in the comments of the video is also a great place. Yeah. There is always Femtok 89 FM if you're in the um, Navua to Nosori corridor in Suva, or if you're in a 10 kilometer radius from Lombasa town. Yes. And if you're not in Fiji, then you can't really listen to our radio yet. Apart from the mixed cloud. Yeah. There's <laughs> programs there. So this has been uh, Femme's Ultima for November. Thanks for watching guys, I'm Program Associate uh, Research Alicia Evans and I'm Program Associate Media Advocacy Sean Bye! Bye!